technology, <laughs> not, not on the quality of my ICT stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I think we are very happy to to be able to produce our results to you this year, and the bank the bank is happy to report that. Uh, we reported a 63% growth in profit after tax of 12.9 million for the year 2018 compared to 7.9 million in 2017. And the bank continues to constantly reward its shareholder in the form of a dividend, and a dividend of 3.035 million was declared in 2018 for the 2017 financial year. And we are, we are going again to declare a dividend to government when we publish, uh, when we have the annual general meeting. But we are also grateful that government has over the years plowed back our dividend towards capitalization of the bank. The asset growth increased by 14% from 268.84 million in December to 306.4 million as at the end of December 2018 due to lines of credit and capital injection. The average loan to deposit ratio for the year also grew to 81% from 78% prior year due to the to growth in the loan booth. The challenge for us is to ensure that 
we grow the book, the book with quality lending to avoid eroding the high returns with impairments. Deposits from customers closed the year at 173.2 million, representing a marginal increase from the 2017 figure of 171.9 million. Liquidity ratio closed the year at 69%, well above the RBZ regulatory minimum of 30%. Our treasury bill holdings at 70% make up only 23% of our total assets as at 31st December 2017, compared to 76.9% in 2017. On the capitalization front, our shareholder funds grew by 37% from 57.7% as at 31st December 2017 to 78.9% as at 31st December 2018. As a result of capital injection and the current year's attributable profit, we thank the shareholder for the 10 million that they injected in the bank in 2017, which is a positive step towards achieving the 100 million capital target for January 1, 2020. We were also going to receive another 10 million in this year's budget as part of the capitalization from the shareholder. So regulatory capital at 72.6 million is above the current regulatory minimum capital of 25 million. But as you know, we are targeting to be a tier one bank and therefore our target is for 100 million. <coughs> capital adequacy ratio at 39.16% was an improvement on the 2017 38.57, despite significant growth in risk weighted assets, i.e. the loan book. The minimum loan required by RBZ is 12 million. And I think we're just showing you there, basically, which really you will pick up in your takeaway, uh, the numbers. Uh, in terms of the income statement, <coughs> and as I said, it was mainly the profit growth from 7.8 to 12.5. And again, statement of financial position, the total assets, the growth from 268.4 to 306.4. And I think here I will be brief in terms of key strategic issues as you have got, you will take this away with you. But the bank's growth initiatives are aligned to government's vision 2030 of achieving upper middle income status as well as agricultural recovery while consolidating business growth and profitability. Agriculture remains at the core of economic recovery and growth in, in Zimbabwe accounting for nearly one-fifth of outputs and a quarter of exports. And we know over 70% of our population in Zimbabwe obtain their livelihood directly from agriculture. As such, the bank will continue to pursue its mandate for viable agricultural financing and development and enhancing output and productivity for both smallholder and commercial farmers. Our key strategic initiatives will continue to be <coughs> financial sustainability, agricultural mandate, increased deposit, the ICT strategies, financial inclusion, enhanced corporate governance, enhanced human capital development. On financial sustainability, as I have said, the bank is targeting 100 million capitalization by 2020, and various strategies are being pursued to achieve this, which include organic growth, additional capital from the shareholder, and courting a strategic partner. Good corporate governance, together with regulatory compliance issues, remain key topical areas 
in the banking sector, particularly as we look for a strategic partner for the bank. The bank is now a sustainable institution and making profits since 2016 after it addressed the challenges it faced post-dollarization in 2009. And I think just to reiterate, the government approved in April 2018 for the bank to engage a, for a strategic partner. We have now gone through the due uh, tender processes for the appointment of transactions advisors, and Ernest and Young are our transaction advisors. We will now engage with them to come up with a prospectus and to go for tender for a strategic partner. Agriculture, as I said, will remain our key priority for the bank and we will continue to support the agricultural sector in financing the major subsectors such as tobacco, maize, soya, horticulture, and livestock. We're pleased to report that uh, we were able to raise 40 million for the 2018-2019 season uh, in conjunction with, agro bill, with FBC for agro bills. This was an increase of 100% from the 20 million that we usually raise in terms of agro bills. So we're happy that the market was able to fully take up the 40 million of agro bills and we will look to see if we can increase the amount that we raise during the coming season. We also want to report that uh, we received a 6 million livestock facility in 2018 from the shareholder, earmarked for restocking and the growth of the country's livestock. This is one sector which has not benefited much uh, from government uh, <coughs> programs, so we're very happy that government mandated us to, with the 6 million support to the livestock sector. We have also been successful in raising a number of offshore lines of credit in support of the agricultural sector and its value chain. We secured a 10 million facility from Africa Bank in 2018, which will be channeled towards capacitating agricultural exporters and value, value addition. And also a 20 million uh, Africa facility to support the local manufacturers. We will continue with our partners, partnerships with major tobacco industry players, in particular the indigenous players, merchants, and to date we have uh, been funding the merchants up to 49.2 million, and we are also working very closely in funding uh, through TIMB in conjunction with the Reserve Bank, smallholder farmers and contract growers. We continue to play a major role in supporting the sugar, sugar cane farmers in the low field and we expect that to expand as the commissioning, since the commissioning of Tokom Kosi Dam. I think uh, on the agricultural mandate, you, you can pick it up for yourselves, but basically we will continue with our active support there. We are also, uh, as a key strategy, of course, wanting to continue to increase our level of deposit mobilization, and at the same time, to try and mobilize additional lines of credit to support the productive sectors. And the agricultural value chain. So we are looking at institutions like with IDC, South Africa, African Bank, African Development Bank, and Trade Development Bank. ICT strategies, as you can see, 
They contributed significantly to the non-interest income growth uh, line for the bank. And it is very critical that we continue to invest in our ICT systems. We are still in the process of upgrading our ICT core banking system for enhanced delivery channels and services. And we expect to have done phase one of that by end of this year. But it's very important because basically that is what helps us provide a good quality service to our clients. So we will be migrating to the latest T24 version Terminals R18, which uses modern arrangement architecture. Phase two of the project involves implementation of new additional modules such as eFreeze 9, Insight for management information systems, internet banking, anti-money laundering, documentation imaging, and loan origination. We also intend to introduce prepaid MasterCard and uh, Visa cards during the course of this year, hopefully during the first half of this year. And we are also in strategic alliances with international remittance institutions such as Western Union and Mukuru. And we are happy that we are able to introduce a call center to provide uh, convenience to our clients 24-7. I think this has been a very useful addition uh, where our clients can get a hold of us at any time during the day or night when they're having challenges with their e-channels. With regard, financial inclusion, as you know, is an initiative, national initiative, which was launched in March 2016, and uh, we are very active in terms of that being one of our major thrusts, particularly as we've focused most of our branches in the rural areas where the unbanked and under underbanked are. And we've also uh, have a microfinance unit which operates mainly in rural areas as well as agency banking uh, to champion our financial inclusion strategy. We are also working on driving youth and gender mainstreaming to serve women and youth in business. In terms of agency banking, this has been a, a popular model for us to tap into the financial inclusion strategy. And as at the 31st of December 2018, we had a total of 527 agent outlets compared to 386 in 2017. Um, I think I want to move on to enhance corporate governance and just to say that uh, our performance uh, is not just reflected in our results, but it's also reflected in how we are viewed by our peers. And in that regard, uh, a peer review on prudential standards, guidelines, and ratings is carried out by the Association of African Development Finance Institutions on an annual basis. The objectives is to allow development finance institutions to compare their governance, financial, and operational sta status with other African DFIs. Agribank this past year ranked number six out of 38 in 2018 in terms of the eighth peer review. Amongst the SADAC DFIs, Agribank was ranked number one out of 19 member institutions which took part in the peer review. We have also received a number of awards which I will not go through, but I stated there in terms of reflecting how well the bank has performed in terms of the public sector financial management awards of excellence, Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators, and the Banks and Banking Survey Awards.
in terms of enhanced human capital development, human resources remain our key uh, strategic uh, initiative where we focus on ensuring that we upscale the training and skills development at all, level, at all levels and training in customer care and product <coughs> development. Currently, we are undertaking a bank-wide skills audit which would also guide staff placements going forward. And we've also instituted a culture change program designed to enhance the team building, collective effective communication, installing a sense of belonging and adherence to the values of the bank for enhanced customer service. And we are also in the process of conducting a business process re-engineering exercise to ensure that we try as much as possible <coughs> to automate our systems and to reduce the manual operations. So in conclusion, I just want to say that we are happy with the performance of the bank uh, in terms of our profitability and in terms of the our ability to increase our lending to our clients, particularly in terms uh, of our mandate. And we are now focused to ensure that we meet the target of 100 million capitalization by January 2020 <coughs> to ensure that the bank is a tier one bank. And of course, we look forward to continued shareholder support as they have always done. And this year, as I said, they have uh, advanced 10 million uh, under capitalization. And in previous years, they've allowed the bank's dividend to be plowed back as part of the capitalization initiative. And we're also working hard with Ernest & Young and uh, other government uh, departments with regard to the engagement of a strategic partner. So that broadly is my presentation to you. As I said, I didn't go through all the issues, uh, but you'll have a detailed uh, uh, presentation which you take away with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we'll take a, a few questions. Um, maybe we could ask five or so questions, then the CEO answers, or one of the executives. Then we carry on like that. So you can put your questions. Uh, before that, maybe I would like to thank Equity Access for beaming us live on, uh, on, on social media um, as we are doing this presentation. Thank you. Any questions? If you are happy, then we can. I thought you were going into you're going next door. <laughs> you have a question? Yes. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, in the, recently the bank has uh, extended the total bills and the bonds to uh, to the stakeholders. Sorry? The bank. It has extended treasure bills and bonds uh, to the market. Uh, like the, 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 uh, last year, uh, going backwards. Uh, how is those impacted uh, on the uh, wider section of the economy, looking at the, the, the current status quo? Okay. I think let's separate treasury bills. Uh, what do we, have, uh, we went to raise in the market were agro bills. And as I said, we have always raised the agro bills in conjunction with FBC Bank. And historically, we have always raised 20 million each year. This past year, we decided to increase, to double the amount to 40 million. So the 40 million was fully subscribed to by the market. And basically, Every year, every year, we have managed to repay the bills on maturity. 
which is why the investors have confidence in terms of uh, the bills that we have raised. And again, as I said, if you look at our increase in loans and advances, which went up by 50%, a part of that would have been financed through the agro bills. So this is a, a, a way to raise money through the market and basically the market has confidence in us raising these bills. So we would, we would want to increase the amounts we raise in future. The issue of the strategic partner, as I said, we have only just had the approval for the engagement of Ernest and Young. So we have not yet sat down with the subcommittee to work out in terms of the term sheet and to agree on a time frame for when we would want to now go to the market to seek for a strategic partner. So I, I can't give you a time frame, but I am at least happy that the process is now moving, particularly after the engagement of Ernest and Young as our transactional advisors. With regard to the livestock, the livestock is what was given to us, I think, just over a month ago. So basically, we have started marketing it through our branches and through the press. And uh, I can't give you the quantum yet of what has been approved, but basically there is significant interest uh, within the farming community. As I said, livestock has not received as much support as the other crops, and at least this facility has a tenure of between three to five years, which is basically what the livestock sector requires, medium-term funding. With regard to NPLs, well, of course, an, an, in, an uh, increase in your loan book does help reduce the NPLs, that's one. But we've also been very strict in terms of uh, how we manage our lending portfolio. Uh, we ensure that only those who have repaid their facilities can access funding. And uh, we also use the credit registry system, which now allows all banks to know the non-performers uh, or the bad debtors. So you don't uh, lend to the bad debtors. And uh, it's important that, uh, particularly with IFRIS 9 and the expected loss model, where you provide for potential losses upfront that you make sure that uh, those that are going to borrow, you are quite confident uh, that they will repay. But I also want to say the debt recovery unit, we have increased staff under debt recovery unit uh, where we are following up on the non-performing loans uh, from those who still owe us money. So it's a combination of Factors, but we, uh, it's very important for us to continue 
with the aggressive stance we have on debt recovery, while also making sure that we focus on lending to those who we know will repay. I think uh, you, you, you are quite right to say that uh, uh, 2018 could be a challenging year uh, in terms of agriculture. At the moment, we are not in a position uh, to fully assess uh, in terms of the impact uh, that the drought has had uh, on crop production. And of course, uh, the, in Shwani Mani and Young again, we don't know the impact and our cyclone is dying. And of course, these current rains that are taking place uh, when people have not finished uh, removing the crop from the ground. So yeah, it's, it will be a tough year, uh, but we'll have to wait, wait and see. At the moment, we can't uh, ascertain how much negative effect it will have on the production side. I'll ask Mr. Macheka just to deal a bit on the microfinance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, our microfinance unit is, is fairly new. When we started, when we launched it, initially it had uh, obviously teething problems here and there. But uh, after we uh, re uh, strategized for it, uh, knowing very well that there are, its management is slightly different from banking. You need to be able to be on the ground all the time. It has really transformed the performance of our microfinance unit now. To the extent that our, the unit is actually is now very profitable. It's now uh, profit, uh, bringing in some profits. And we also use it mainly to <coughs> distribute empowerment uh, facilities. You know, the women uh, in business facilities, the youth facilities. And for, our, for those type of facilities, we have found that it's the repayment has been nearly way, way over 80 percent, and we actually intend to expand even more in those for the distribution, particularly because we distribute it across 20 of our branches countrywide. So we can reach places way into places where normal banking doesn't happen. We also use the uh, microfinance to go into partnerships with the uh, strategic partners like we in the past year we have been in partnership with Save the Children uh, in Binga where when uh, development partners would like to assist certain areas they approach Agribank to actually run the projects for them and we have been doing that very well in fact our Binga project has been run very successfully, almost 90% repayment um, and um, areas like Shamva, we have also gone into partnership with uh, SOS Children's Home where we are actually running another project there. So our microfinance is actually going to be a very big growth area. It had its teething problems as, as I mentioned earlier on, but we re-looked at it and we re refocused it and as of now it's running very well. The NPLs for all the new loans that we're doing are below the, the standard, which is 5%, and we are pleased with that. But the initial loan was obviously a bit of a challenge, and it, was, it had its own development programs because we didn't have it, and we had to really learn as we went along. So performance-wise, it's doing very well now, and uh, we are very pleased with it, and we think that into the future, it is really going to be the main driver for our financial inclusion. Do we have any more questions? Okay, okay. I wanted to find out how much are you targeting target to raise from uh, regional financial institutions? Well, as I said, we raised uh, 30 million so far is it under our friends in bank. I would look for this coming coming season to 
to try and raise at least maybe 40, 50 million. Because we really want to support uh, uh, production and the export sectors. A lot of our challenges that we're facing in this economy is lack of production, productivity, and exports. So when you find with a liquidity problem, a foreign exchange problem, it's because the country is not exporting. So we as banks have a role to try and facilitate to augment already export earnings by getting lines of credit to support the productive sectors. I think Mr. Marovo, sorry? Yeah. Just check that, I don't think we okay. Are there any more questions? Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have a few drinks for you in the next, in the next boardroom. Uh,